Abdul Rahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhu, he had this habit. He used to do good quietly. They only found out later what he used to do. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf was the richest Sahaba of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was the richest companion who had worth of billions and he was a businessman he was an honest businessman he has done different sorts of business and he has done a lot of different things let's learn how he has earned quite a lot of money he used to send finances money as gift to a lot of the people the widows and subhanallah those who were poor without anyone knowing that he did this now how did he get this wealth well he made the hijra to habasha Thereafter, he made the hijrah to al Madina. When he got to Madina Munawwara, there was something unique happening. Something amazing that was happening. It was called al Mu'akha, The fostering of a brotherhood between the people from Makkah and the people of Medina. So there was a man by the name of Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'ah. Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu was one of the wealthiest of the Ansar. Meaning of the people of Medina. So... They loved the people who came from Mecca so much. Although in our terms today, if people had to come in similar circumstances, we would call them refugees. Agreed? Refugee. That's a camp. They've come from refugee camp and so on. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it was so easy. The thousands who came from Mecca, he got a family from Medina. Each family taking one family. Each family taking one. Each family take. And you know what? They were dispersed. And they were looked after. Well looked after. By their brothers and sisters from the Ansar. May Allah make us from among those who care for each other. Today when a donation is being asked for. And it shouldn't be asked for. We should donate before they ask us. But even if it is being asked for. We sometimes feel ashamed. You know what, my sister, my brother, even if it means one pound, one dollar, even if it means two or five, it makes a difference. I'm sure you might have seen the signs at certain businesses where they say, your change will make a change. Your change will make a change. That's a very good catch line. I tell you why. Your change does make a change. You think, well, it's 25p, 10p. That 10p, 25p means a lot. Imagine if a thousand people gave 1025p, what do we have? We've got 200 pounds, 250 pounds, if my calculation is correct. If not, then at least 25 pounds, subhanAllah. <laughs> we can do something with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So, Abdurrahman ibn Auf had this brother of his by Mu'akha in Medina Munawwara known as Sa'd ibn al-Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu. Sa'd came to him and said, my brother, I am one of the wealthiest from the Ansar. And I tell you, I'm going to split everything I have into half. And I will give you half and I will remain with the other half. Wow. We would not do that for our real brothers and sisters, would we? We cheat them. When someone's passed away, inheritance comes, it has to be shared. What's legitimately not yours, it belongs to them. We still don't want to give it to them. And we are millionaires sometimes. I've seen the problem is bigger with those who have more wealth. They become more miserly. You find a multi-millionaire fighting for 100,000 because his father passed away. It's supposed to go to his sister and he doesn't. That is a test for him. He was never going to get wealth besides that which was written for him. And if he ate something that wasn't his, the hadith says, إِنَّمَا هِيَ قِطْعَةٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَلْيَأْخُذْهَا أَوْ لِيَذَرْهَا it is indeed a piece of the fire of Jahannam, of hellfire. He can either take it or leave it. Subhanallah, what a powerful piece of advice of Rasulullah May we be encouraged to sort out our matters and on top of that, be charitable. Especially when it comes to our family members, my beloved brothers and sisters. Take a look at Abdurrahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhu. So what happened? He says, may Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. Show me where is the marketplace. I'm a businessman. Show me where is the marketplace. So he refused to take from the wealth of Sa'ad ibn Rabi'ah. Although legitimately, had he taken it, it would have been okay. He refused to take. He says, show me the marketplace. And this shows us, my brothers, my sisters, when you work hard, your own perspiration, and you've earned something, there is greater blessing in it than you can imagine. There is greater blessing in it than you can imagine. Call out to Allah. Don't give up your faith. Don't give up your duty unto Allah. Call out to the same Allah who is the owner of your sustenance to give you 
and Allah will open your doors. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu an, he came back the same day. Imagine he arrived at the souq of Banu Qaynuqa where there were a lot of Jewish people. He dealt with them for the day. The same evening he came back with some foodstuffs, subhanallah. When he left, he had no money on him, zero, nothing. He went, he did some deal somehow, a few dealings, mashallah. He came back with some food items, mashallah. The following day, he went. A few days later, he got married. So my brothers and sisters, if you want to get rich, then do good deeds in secret, give more charity and do business with honesty and try to reach out to people as much as you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give barakah in your business, in your life and in your wealth.